This is a public service announcement brought to you by Colston Edwards, licensed marriage and family therapist. Anderson Union High School District has now joined the ranks of the ill-informed members of public school boards that believe somehow a board policy can outweigh California state curriculum. And as a reminder to the parents who are encouraging this behavior from board members, if you can think back to when you were a kid and realizing perhaps that the teacher had earned your trust because they were respectful to you um, or whatever your criteria was um, as a kid to feel like, hey, I can tell this teacher anything. The teacher earned that. If it was a principal, the principal earned that with you. For me, it was the cafeteria lady. She was amazing and I worked hard for her. Not because as a kid, my work ethic was anything near what it is now as an adult, as I choose it to be, but I was learning what work ethic was and why it was important. And the cafeteria lady at my elementary school helped reinforce that, that learning because she cared about me and she loved me. Parents who want to turn those special trusting relationships between a kid and their teacher, a kid and the principal, a kid and the cafeteria lady, a kid and the janitor, the kid and any school staff, putting school staff into a position where they're now the spy for the parents who haven't learned how to have a relationship with their kid based on trust. Because if you had, as a parent, built trust with your kid, had a very healthy, positive, encouraging relationship with your kid, if you as a parent had taught your kid that you were safe, then our trans kids wouldn't have to out themselves to a teacher first. Requiring school staff to be the spy, to be the narc, because you as a parent have failed at your job when it comes to creating a safe place for your kid. So instead of doing the work your damn self, you're going to take advantage of the work that that teacher or that school staff has done in building rapport with your kid. You didn't earn that. You didn't earn the kid's trust. Not enough to share with you that maybe they have a different pronoun preference. Maybe they have a different name preference. And instead, ooh, let's make it a requirement that in order for these teachers to be in compliance with this board policy, they have to report within three days. If you as a parent still haven't figured out how to have a trusting, encouraging, supportive, safe relationship with your child. Stop relying on other school staff who have learned how to do that, who do it every single fucking day because they're trustworthy and they're not using information against kids. If you're an involved parent, you already know your kid may be non-gender conforming. For you parents who don't know, that are wanting to make sure that these school spies give you the information. Figure it out your own damn self. Create a safe relationship with your child. For those of you who missed the boat on that and don't understand why these board policies are so idiotic and detrimental and possibly lethal, fatal for these kids, ask a teacher. I'm sure they'd love to educate you. California Department of Education. Here's some education for you. Consistent with our mission to provide a world-class education for our students, from early childhood to adulthood, the California Department of Education issues the following frequently asked questions, facts, in an effort to A, Foster an educational environment that is safe and free from discrimination for all students, 
regardless of sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression. And B, assist school districts with understanding and implementing policy changes related to AB 1266 and transgender student privacy, facility use, and participation in school athletic competitions. A transgender or gender non-conforming student may not express their gender identity openly in all contexts, including at home. Revealing a student's gender identity or expression to others may compromise the student's safety. Thus, preserving a student's privacy is of the utmost importance. The right of transgender students to keep their transgender status private is grounded in California's anti-discrimination laws, as well as federal and state laws. Disclosing that a student is transgender without the student's permission may violate California's anti-discrimination law by increasing the student's vulnerability to harassment and may violate the student's right to privacy. A school district is required to maintain a mandatory permanent student record, which includes the legal name of the student and the student's gender. If and when a school district receives documentation that such legal name or gender has been changed, the district must update the student's official record accordingly. If the school district has not received documentation supporting a legal name or gender change, the school should nonetheless update all unofficial school records, attendance sheets, school IDs, report cards, to reflect the student's name and gender marker that is consistent with the student's gender identity. This is critical in order to avoid unintentionally revealing the student's transgender status to others in violation of the student's privacy rights. If a student so chooses, District personnel shall be required to address the student by a name and the pronouns consistent with the student's gender identity without the necessity of legal documentation or a change to the student's official district record. The student's age is not a factor. That's a sentence all in and of itself. The student's age is not a factor. For example, children as early as age two are expressing a different gender identity. It is strongly suggested that teachers privately ask transgender or gender nonconforming students at the beginning of the school year how they want to be addressed in class, in correspondence to the home, or at conferences with the student's parents. In addition to preserving a transgender student's privacy, referring to transgender students by the student's chosen name and pronouns actually fosters a safe, supportive, and inclusive learning environment. To ensure that transgender students have equal access to the programs and activities provided by the school, all members of the school community, all, all members of the school community must use a transgender student's chosen name and pronouns. Schools should also implement safeguards to reduce the possibility of inadvertent slips or mistakes, particularly among temporary personnel such as substitute teachers. As a member, or if a member of the school community intentionally, this happens, intentionally uses a student's incorrect name and pronoun or persistently refuses to respect a student's chosen name and pronouns, that conduct should be treated as harassment. As harassment. That type of harassment can create a hostile learning environment, violate the transgender student's privacy rights, and increase that student's risk for harassment by other members of the school community. Examples of this type of harassment include a teacher consistently using the student's incorrect name when displaying the student's work in the classroom, or a transgender student's peers referring to the student by the student's birth name during class, but would not include unintentional or sporadic occurrences. Depending on the circumstances, the school's failure to address known incidents of that type of harassment may violate California's anti-discrimination laws. And here we are with parents sitting on school boards, some of which don't even enroll their own kids in the school board in which they're sitting on. I wonder why that is. La Barbera. Anderson Union High School Districts recently passed this a four to one vote on their school board, their stacked school board, with the intention of really coming in to harass gender nonconforming students. Just because you voted for it doesn't make it legal.